Hi guys, I'm Marin, and welcome to another installment of SMTR Previews, where we take a look at what's inside the latest issue of the Science and Technology Review. Today, we're talking about rocket science, and more specifically, how scientists are using high-performance computing or supercomputing to help rockets get off the ground. As you can imagine, rockets are really big, really complicated, and full of lots of different parts. So it's really difficult, not to mention expensive, to build a prototype, see what doesn't work, figure out how to fix it, and then build another one. In fact, it's this process of trial and error that contributes to most of the time spent building rockets. So, researchers at Lawrence Livermore are using supercomputing to hone concept designs of things like rocket engines before prototypes are built and tested. Scientists are using huge computer codes to simulate things like combustion, thrust, temperature, and structural resilience of rocket parts. Using these codes on lab supercomputers, researchers have tested out the early stages of things like a hypersonic aerospace vehicle, as in one that's faster than the speed of sound a liquid propellant rocket engine for DARPA's next generation rocket program, a reusable space plane that's capable of launching 10 times in 10 days, exceeding Mach 10 speeds, and launching payloads into low Earth orbit. But let's hear a little more from an expert. We had several different things to simulate. Most of them involved the turbulent mixing and combustion of fuel and oxidizer in a rocket engine combustion chamber. And we were using advanced multi-physics codes, which were run on massively parallel supercomputers, in some cases for several hundred hours, to be able to calculate time-varying flow phenomena. We want to capture that as accurately as possible. For the first time, we were able to model combustion inside a rocket engine with 3D large eddy simulation codes. We also were able, for the first time, to do 3D models of the exterior flow field for an aerospike engine. Our next steps are to actually compare those models against real-world data. So we're hoping that the application of these techniques of high-performance computing to the problems of launch vehicle and propulsion development can help speed those processes along and make it possible for America to regain leadership in space. The idea is that with advanced simulations, you can reduce your development costs so that ultimately you'll be able to place payloads in orbit for significantly less than currently, and the thought is 10 thousand dollars a pound now to low earth orbit, how about a hundred dollars a pound, how about ten dollars a pound, and that may be possible using advanced computing properly. This stuff is so cool you guys, and if you're interested in learning more you can pick up your copy of the SMTR October November issue either in person at the lab or you can sign up to receive it in the mail here or you can read it online here. Click the subscribe link below to stay up to date and get a sneak peek inside every issue of SMTR. See you next time.